Right, colleagues, without further ado, let's, let's jump straight into it. Delegates, thank you for, for making the time. Um, the topic we have been given today is CEO Think Tank, Projects to Promote Regional Integration, a panel discussion by the Railway CEOs per corridor. Now, the topic of regional integration is close to our hearts as NEPAD. Uh, as you can appreciate, we, we're a Pan-African organization and we try to support uh, different government entities, railways, uh, state-owned entities within the energy space in terms of driving that agenda for regional integration. As an example, we've been doing quite a lot of work on the North-South Rail Corridor, supporting a lot of the regional rail operators that are seated here today. We've done work uh, in terms of supporting our colleagues uh, in Mozambique, as an example, ENH, in terms of their regional uh, gas uh, agenda. Um, and we do quite a lot of work in terms of uh, engaging and supporting uh, different state-owned entities, government entities, on issues around trade, non-tariff barriers, and particularly the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. And those are all regional integration issues. Now, just to, to, to get the discussion going, I'm, I'm going to start perhaps with Mr. Lamini. Uh, I'll, I'll throw my first question to you. On this topic of, of regional integration, is this dream of regional integration still alive? Can we really achieve it? And my question to you is, what does that actually mean to Eswatini Railways? You know, what, what are the measurable elements that you say, if you are talking about a regional integration as Eswatini, what does that mean to you? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, thanks, Kudzi. Um, uh, interesting topic, uh, as usual. Um, for Eswatini Railways, uh, regional integration uh, means um, absence of uh, silos. Um, I think um, in the earlier panel, we had um, uh, submissions that um, um, really we should be working together as uh, railways um, <clears throat> because... Um, uh, if we, if if the effort is concerted, then it just means that uh, we're able to achieve greater and bigger things. Uh, so, as a Swatini Railways, uh, we have seen that um, um, if we work with our um, uh, uh, railway with with other railways in the region, for instance, uh, our closest neighbours are South Africa and Mozambique, uh, we've seen um, uh, a great dividend. Um, in, uh, in this collaboration. An example of that happening is, uh, I'll just go straight to it. Uh, we had uh, CFM and the Swatin Railway sign a seamless, uh, uh, a, a seamless uh, border agreement uh, to move uh, coal uh, through Eswatini Swatin uh, to the port of Maputo. Uh, there, were there, was a, there were a lot of uh, stakeholders involved in this. A lot of work went in, into it. But what I can say is that uh, the dream um, of working together has actually um, realized, um, uh, in fact, we have seen uh, a lot of um, uh, um, uh, increase in traffic. What I can say is that uh, on the, uh, so in the previous month, so this, seamless agreement was signed in August, the 5th of this year. Um, we had um, sort of reached a plateau in terms of uh, the traffic that was going through to Maputo. Um, the plateau was uh, about 60,000, 60, 66,000 uh, tons of coal. And then um, a month down, so this, this was August when this signature happened. And now we're in October time, so August, September, October. Uh, we are now looking at 100,000 tons of coal just because we removed the barrier of um, um, having, to, having trains to stop and, you know, and all the rest of it. So we have a conveyor belt scenario here where we have trains moving seamlessly from Maputo into one of our sidings in Eswatini and back, and um, we have a similar arrangement 
um, of train sets moving from Eswatini to Maputo. Um, so I think that is, if there's one example that comes to the top of my head, um, is, the, is, that, is this uh, coal, um, uh, uh, coal traffic. No, that's perfect. Thanks, thanks for that, Nixon. And maybe let's move on to Mr. Matabel from, from CFM. We know that you have struck some partnerships with Transnet uh, to run seamless trains uh, from South Africa all the way through to, to Maputo. But maybe let's, let's try and draw from, from your wisdom. What does true regional integration mean to you? You've been in the business a, a long time. Uh, and people talk about regional integration in different ways. Some talk about running through trains. Some talk about having more trade. Uh, flowing through through the corridors. Uh, some talk about the partnership between different state-owned entities. What, what does it mean to CFM? Thank you very much. Um, for CFM, the strategy in CFM is starting with this agreement. We signed it with the Transnet and the and the, and, and the Eswatini Railways. The idea is really to, to, to follow up the decision from the SADAT, the decision how to compete with the road. The clients still claim that uh, uh, we, we lose more times in the border, at the border. So, uh, uh, so the strategy of doing seamless train it will help us in terms of uh, reducing uh, not only our transit time, but basically our, our turnaround. So uh, we know that uh, here in the region system, we have more traffic, as other fellows said. In South Africa, there's no problem of volume. The volume is there. The point is how to convey those volume. So the idea is that uh, if we really uh, we engage in this strategy of seamless train, uh, in which uh, uh, we said in, in South Africa, we are now starting with the Chrome product. Chrome product, why? Because there is no doubt that the more volume to Maputo is Chromium. And although we are still having traffic of mag magnetized and other product, but the chrome and the ferrochrome is the most volumes to be carried out to to port of Mozambique. So uh, uh, we feel that the most important is to compete with the, the road. That's why that's why we are now doubling the railway, the Rishan Garcia railway line. You know the Rishan Garcia railway line is 80, 80 kilometers. Now our project is is to to have more for 40 kilometers doubling of this line. The strategy is really that was what I'm telling about. In terms of Goba line, is the same. We signed an agreement saying that uh, let's do the same. There is a traffic which is going to Sidokoko. In, in Goba line, uh, then the idea by road, by trucks, then the idea is that from there we can ship those traffic from, from, tra from traffic to the rail. And then, then as, uh, uh, as my fellow said, and doing the same service train. So this is the strategy, using the dry, the dry port it, the, the use of the tripod is, is uh, let us say, uh, uh, the combination with the track and the rails. The same we are doing in the Rishan Garcia line with the tripod, in which traffic like magnetite is, is, is coming up to the tripod, and then from there, as well as we are doing in the in the Sido Coco, the traffic is keeping, is picking to, is picked out to, 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 to the rail. So this is the strategy we are now feel that should be followed. Thank you very much. Now, you've introduced the, the topic of the, the trucks, and I'm going to move on to, to Tazara. Uh, Bruno, 
how fierce is the competition that you're facing from, from the trucking uh, industry? And if you can put some numbers to that for us. And I'll give some context that you're moving a lot of copper out of the, the copper belt in Zambia, DRC, uh, all the way through to the port of Dar es Salaam. We believe you've captured quite a lot of market share from, from Durban. Um, but how fierce is that competition that you're experiencing from the truckers? And, and on what fronts are you experiencing that competition? Is it pricing? Is it transit times? Is it the customer service uh, itself? You know, how you're engaging with the customer? You know, how fierce is that competition that you're, that you're facing from, from the tra trucking uh, fraternity? Uh, thank you very much. Um, before I come to that uh, answer, uh, let me just talk a little bit about integration. Integration is very, very critical for the region, for the regional railways. However, at the moment, is works in progress. A lot of the work that we are doing as railways is still in silos. Our planning is in silos. So this integration, if I were to borrow some of the words from um, Mr. Nelson Mandela, it is an ideal to which we should work towards this integration, but it is still works in, works in, works in progress. Now coming specifically uh, to uh, uh, coming specifically to the competition with the roads. Yes, we have a lot of competition with the roads. For one, the roads, um, uh, the, the road trackers are a lot nimble and they are not well regulated. They are subsidized uh, in inverted commas by the fact that the governments repair the infrastructure. We are not. We are not. We have to fix our own infrastructure, and we have uh, uh, way bridges along the way that uh, uh, the roads in many areas are not there. So they are able to overload their, 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 their trucks, therefore creating an unfair uh, uh, competition. In terms of um, uh, government support, in Zambia, uh, we have, the government has deliberately put up a policy whereby 30% of the traffic is to move by rail, 30% of the traffic. What this has done then is it has um, forced our um, uh, our, it has forced the, 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 the mines, etc., to move some of, that track, uh, some, some of that traffic to road, I mean to rail. However, this policy has come before facilitating and capacitating the railways to be able to move that 30%. So we have that challenge that even when, even when there is so much traffic for you, the, the infrastructure, the rolling stock is insufficient today to move that traffic. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you for that, that, that input. And maybe I'll move uh, to Tozama all the way at the end from, from TFR. Um, Bruno's talked about the legislation that, that was brought in uh, in Zambia to move 30% of the bulk heavy cargo onto, onto rail. But the realities are coming to bear. Capacity. Is the capacity available? Now, when you're talking to your customers, what are those key things that they're saying to you where they're saying these are the key decision-making criteria for why we use road over rail? So it's one thing for us to have the legislation in place, but the bottom line is customers are still moving on to road. So what are those, if I can say, top three things that your customers are saying because of these three key things, we cannot even consider rail. I mean, I had a discussion at one point where, with colleagues from, from MSC and they were saying, there are specific things that we require from rail for us to be able to commit a significant amount of volume. Um, wh what are your customers uh, telling you? Yeah, no, thanks for that. Um, <clears throat> three key values for customers is reliability and, and being consistent in delivering trains on time and reliably so. Um, the, the, the ability to recover very quickly should you have deviations from the service. Um, so the frustration is the long turnaround times 
uh, that, you know, because if you look at the fact that we're exporting, all the trains have to meet the vessels and have to meet the vessels in time and create the stockpile so that you don't get delays at the port. So that's a, those are the things that the customers are really looking for. Um, so what we need to do is, is work in a collaborative manner for borderless trains to make sure that the, the delays that Mr. Machabel was mentioning at the border, we do away with them. And the train runs, and you don't see a difference between Transnet and CFM. And we've, we've seen successful uh, uh, trial in that regard. And that has helped us to improve the cycle times to improve the utilization of the resources. And the customers are quite excited about, about those results. It's a question now of us finding a way that we implement them and be consistent and sustainable in, in those things that we've implemented. But reliability is definitely at the top of the game. Well, that's perfect. And that's a good segue uh, for me to bring in uh, Mr. Shonio from BBR. Uh, we're talking about through trains. We're talking about seamless uh, trains. We're talking about regional integration. This is what the customer is looking for, is, is what uh, TFR is telling us. Uh, this is what will solve the, the, the issues that we have. But how close are we, if you take the North-South Corridor, to actually getting to a point where we can actually have through trains running? So from, from a TFR perspective, they've given us uh, you know, an update that, look, they're running those, those, those seamless trains uh, in collaboration with CFM. Um, but from a BBR perspective, you sit in the middle. When trains arrive at BBD, what is the headache that you have? And how far are we realistically from being able to start running through trains? Because this is what the customer is looking for. Well, thank you. I think we are faced with uh, one thing. I think first, I think rail is a bit complicated in that you are dealing with uh, rail administrators from different companies. And one thing that we have been working on as rail operators is to standardize in terms of uh, the braking system, for example, and also in terms of uh, the standard of uh, the wagons that are going on to the other rail operators' uh, line. So that has been a hindrance to say you can have an air brake uh, train and uh, another one can say, no, we, 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 we don't want that train. So I think we've been working on making sure that, uh, that there is standardization in terms of the, the wagons, for example. And also I think through trains, for example, I think Transnet is way ahead of everybody in terms of having electrical trains. We have mostly diesel trains uh, in other regional administrators. So that's another thing that limits in terms of uh, through trains being run through. But what we have done is we have tried to make sure that uh, there is communication on a daily basis among the rail operators to, to, to understand where traffic is and to assist each other in making sure that there is, uh, that there is a seamless flow of traffic there. The additional challenge is in terms of uh, the quality of infrastructure from one rail operator to the next. That's another limitation that has existed. And I think from BBR perspective, for example, we know we have areas where we needed to improve in terms of uh, the, the, the speed cautions and everything. Uh, recently, we've just gone into a program where we are upgrading certain sections of the line so that those uh, the limitations uh, of, of infrastructure are removed. So I think this is something that we have to plan as all the railway operators on the corridor that we eliminate all the bottlenecks that are there. But one thing I know is uh, the teams are talking on a daily basis at least to understand where customers' traffic is and to a certain extent, the information is flowing, but there is room for improvement. Thank you. Right. No, thank you for that, for that intervention. And, and we'll move on to, to CFL now. Um, Mr. Joachim, we have arguably started to come out of this period of, of uh, a very aggressive COVID-19 pandemic. And the supply chains were tested during that period, uh, extremely tested. What are some of the things that you can say the railways, and of course you can speak to your, your railway, learned during that period in terms of responding to those supply chain pressures? Um, and what are those lessons that we can now import even as we exit uh, COVID-19 to say these are some of the things that we, we learned in terms of how to optimize. Uh, Raymond was talking about optimization. Uh, TFR was talking about uh, efficiency. What are some of those things that, that we have picked up uh, and even innovations you've brought into your, your operations that you can say, look, we brought in these innovations uh, when we were under pressure. 
And we are continuing with those innovations in order for us to, to get the volumes from the customer. Um, Sr. Julio, o panelista está a perguntar que durante o, a fase da, da, da pandemia do Covid-19, do COVID houve experiências negativas, houve, passou-se tempos difíceis em que o seu departamento teve atravessado muitas dificuldades. Mas que, graças a Deus, a pandemia passou. Agora, a, a pergunta que se faz agora é saber o que é que, é, o, que, é que o seu departamento poderá, que tipo de lições terá se tirado uh, desse, de, de, dessas dificuldades e que tipo de e, iniciativas uh, de, que vão implementar uh, indo para frente. Que tipo de lições é que pode ter se tirado? Ok. I will speak português. It's my language. For me, it's better and comfortable. Quando nós, em Angola, a pandemia da Covid-19 atingiu o país. When we, in Angola, uh, we were affected by the uh, pandem Covid-19 uh, pandemic. Todo o processo produtivo ferroviário parou. All the railways infrastructure operation came to stand still. Sabemos quais foram as implicações negativas. We all know what were the uh, negative uh, impacts of that. Do ponto de vista econômico e social. Uh, uh, taking consideration of a social, uh, social, uh, social view, an economic view. De qualquer das formas, queria recordar que muito antes dessa pandemia. However, I would like to remind all that uh, far before even the pandemic uh, uh, occurred, Angola teve em si o desafio de reabilitar e modernizar os caminhos de ferro, os três caminhos de ferro. Angola already was involved on a challenge of renewing the whole uh, infrastructure of rail railways. Pelo facto de possuir uma uma costa marítima muito larga. This due to Angola um, having an, a very or a long, um, a, a long coast, marine coast, uh, 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 as a country. E para permitir o apoio aos outros países com que tem fronteira. In order, uh, uh, this was in order to enable and to support um, the, the the neighboring countries which uh, the surrounding Angola. Refiro-me ao Congo Brazzaville, a RDC, a Zambia e Namíbia. I'm talking about here my neighboring countries such as uh, um, uh, um, Congo, uh, Congo Brazzaville, Zambia and Zambia. Angola tem três caminhos de ferro. Angola structure has got uh, three, uh, three structured railways departments. A norte, caminho de ferro do Luanda. The north, the south and, and the Luanda one. Ao centro, caminho de ferro de Benguela. In the center, we have a Benguela Railways. Ao sul, caminho de ferro de Moçambique. And in, in the south, we have a Railways of Moçambides. O desafio é a interconexão interna, a interconexão com os países vizinhos. The challenge that we are facing still is uh, how to interact all those three three provinces with uh, our neighboring countries. No caso, vamos falar do caminho de ferro de Benguela com 1344 km. If we are talking about uh, Benguela Railways, for example, Benguela Railways has uh, about 1400 uh, uh, kilometers in, uh, in 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 distance. Onde a sua linha já está ligada com a RDC? Uh, Benguela line is now, uh, I'm glad to say that the Benguela line is now um, 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 linked to, to, to Congo. A preocupação é a transportação do minério, manganês e o cobre. Uh, our focus is on uh, helping, helping to expedite the, the manganese and, and um, the manganese project. Para além de passageiros. Uh, this is beyond, besides the passenger services. E, e como experiência depois da COVID 
19 as an experience after the pandemic of COVID-19. Angola prepara-se para o mês de novembro para a assinatura de um acordo tripartido entre Angola, RDC e a Zâmbia para facilitação do transporte de mercadorias. Currently, Angola is busy preparing itself to sign an, uh, an, uh, an agreement um, in, in, in November uh, in order that to make the whole infrastructure, regional infrastructure uh, uh, affordable. Só desta forma é que vemos eh, o apoio que Angola, aproveitando a sua costa marítima, apoiar os restantes países com quem tem fronteira. Ok, one of the, uh, our focus and priorities is to enable, be able to support our, our neighboring countries to take advantage of the sea facilities that we have. Enquanto isso, a ideia da conexão do caminho de ferro de Moçambique com a Namíbia. Uh, also, the other project that we have is uh, to connect our Moçambique's railways with Namibia. E o caminho de ferro de Luanda, ligação com o norte do Congo. Uh, railways Luanda to connect, to link with uh, RDC. Em resumo, o desafio é grande para esta prestação na integração regional. In summary, the challenge is great in order to have all this project running smoothly. Resume-se na interligação norte-sul pelo, pelo mar. Uh, this, as I indicated, the summary or the focus is uh, to, to, to connect the south and, uh, and the sea. North Sul pelo centro. And the north, south, and south, I mean, north, center, and, and, and the south. E north Sul, Sul pelo leste. And uh, north from the east. Assim teríamos uma integração completa no espaço territorial Angola. If we could achieve this, then we will be able to have achieved the regional integration. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that, for, for that intervention as well. Now, our time is, is coming to, to an end in terms of our panel discussion. And I've got one simple question, which I'll pose to the entire panel. Um, and we'll go uh, all the way from CFM and we'll, we'll go all the way through to, to TFR. And it's a simple question. What is keeping you up at night? What is it that you're saying, this is the number one issue that is keeping me awake at night? in terms of me being able to move more traffic on rail. And I'll add a, a caveat to that. What is then the corresponding ask to your fellow railways? To say, in order for me to deal with this one thing that's keeping me up at night, this is what I need for TFR to do. This is what I need for Eswatini Railways to do. So if, if the whole panel can reflect on that, what is the one thing that is keeping you up at night? And what is the corresponding ask to your fellow CEOs? Mr. Matabel. It's for me. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. For, for CFM, the challenge now is, uh, is, is, uh, is IT system, ST technology. Uh, our feeling is that uh, really if we engage in the IT system, meaning that uh, uh, if we, we uh, 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 build the communication system in both railways, in both administration, what is what you are now trying to do in this seamless service, uh, to be able to know when the train is, is coming uh, from other point of, or in point of, uh, of, uh, of loaded point, in which time the, uh, the, the trains will reach the board, which consignment, if all of this information can be uh, 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 agglutinated in the, in, the, in, in the system, I was saying the communication system, we are now implementing also the, the, the railways operation management system. So all idea is to know where is the train, which cargo the train is carrying, and, uh, and, and at what time, 
those traffic will reach in which part of the, of, of, of the, then this will enable us to know or to, to manage properly the trends to, so that uh, we will uh, reduce the time, uh, the time which is very important for us, how to reduce the time dealing with this trend, dealing with these commodities. So I was saying first that this, uh, when, we were, when I was saying about the Rizan Garcia and the Goba line, but please give me opportunity to tell also about the Limpopo line. Because in Limpopo line, we are saving uh, uh, Zimbabwe for chrome, chrome and, uh, and, and containers, and, and as well as fertilizers in the salt system, telling a uh, 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 corridor, uh, Maputo corridor, let us say. And also in the south system, in the, south, in the center system, I mean, we have a, a Machupanda line which now is under rehabilitation that is costing us about 200 million US dollars, the, re, the rehabilitation of that Machupanda line. We did also, we did in, in Machupanda line, we are now moving chrome and the ferrochrome. The chrome and the ferrochrome is also uh, uh, conveyed through the purple line. Then we have built another system. We have rebuilt the, the line which is linking Malawi, Malawi in, in the center, the, the uh, Mutarara Villanova frontier, uh, which is 40 kilometers. Now also for, for, for containers, uh, containers, uh, fuel, fertilizer, but the, 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 the IT technology is to be placed on all of this system. The, 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 we are now doing the test with the, uh, with the, with the, with the, with the TFR in terms of uh, of, in, of, of being clear where really are the trends, how to, uh, to see where are the trends in both uh, administration, okay? So meaning that CFM in this moment as a, as a, as a pilot system, we are doing a, a, a trends to Belfast and TFR are doing it to Maputo. So we need to know where, where are the trends right. and how, where is moving. So the IT system will help us. The communication right. system for us is the core, is the priority. No, Thank you very much. That's perfect. And I'll put a pin in that one for our colleagues from TFR, just to respond to that, to say what then needs to be done to deliver on that. You know, what are the timelines? What else is, is outstanding for us to get to the point of what is keeping uh, CFM awake at night? Um, but we'll get, to, we'll get to that, so I'll give you some, some time to prepare for that. Bruno, um, what is it that, that, that is your biggest, your, your biggest uh, challenge, and you know, what's the ask to Zambia Railways, and maybe even extend it to the Port of Dar es Salaam? What, what, what is that single issue, um, and what is the request, more importantly? What keeps me awake at night is the thought that when I wake up in the morning, I'll have no customers. Why? because the region has a terrible shortage of rolling stock. My ask to my colleagues, Zambia Railways, SNCC, is to contribute more and more wagons into this system. Today, all the wagons in this corridor are from Tazara, and they demand the demand from my customers is very huge. I'm very sure that there is a lot of frustrations from my customers because we are not able to move their valuable traffic due to inadequate number of wagons. That is my, my, my ask from my customers and that is what keeps me awake at night. No, and well said, and, and the, the issue of capacity is, is critical. This is the number one thing that a customer will ask you first. Can you move the cargo? Nixon, moving on to you. What, what is it that, that you want to 
to point to your fellow, fellow rail, rail CEOs? And what is that single issue? Mm, uh, thanks, because I know you said um, a single issue, but um, sometimes <laughs> there's a myriad of um, uh, issues that uh, will keep you awake at night, depending on what, um, uh, what the situation is um, on the ground. Uh, but uh, I, will, I must say that uh, I once had a dream, right? Um, <laughs> um, uh, in this dream, I had uh, a lot of commodities coming into Eswatini. Uh, there's just so much of these commodities, and I was running out of room. Um, um, and um, so that dream actually propelled me into thinking, how can I actually um, make Eswatini the transit hub? Yeah, it's a small country, but um, I think uh, one should really be looking at um, uh, developing Eswatini as a, a transit hub or a distribution center, or in an extension of the um, a port of Maputo or a port of uh, Durban. Uh, I think that uh, sort of uh, uh, um, echoes with the regional integration um, um, approach. Um, and I think also the other thing is, um, I would really like it's at one, I mean, uh, railways are resilient. Um, I think one of the questions or, the, um, or comments from, from, from the audience was that uh, some of the infrastructure that we're looking at um, is more than 60 years old. So railways are resilient. We've seen that through uh, COVID. Now, yes, you know, the Victorians built tunnels and so on, but I think it's, um, um, it's incumbent upon ourselves to uh, make sure that uh, uh, the railways um, uh, sort of survive into the future. And how can we do that? We need technology. We need to invest in technology. I think um, 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 Matabel, uh, Engineer Matabel has uh, mentioned that um, uh, that we need to know where our rolling stock is, um, and and we can track that uh, real time. And um, the infrastructure that we currently own um, actually is uh, being underutilized because, um, for instance, I have 300 kilometers of railway line. Uh, I probably have 12 slots on the transit, uh, that is traffic coming from uh, the north down to the south. But if I had technology assisting me, I could actually push in more trains because I'll then be in a position to uh, reduce headways without causing accidents. I'll have somebody sitting um, in the room, um, in, in the control room, uh, making sure that uh, we, we, you know, nothing goes wrong. And they can track... Um, uh, the rolling stock. So this is something that's already, I mean, we've already started, but I think as railways, um, I said to Mr. Uh, to Engineer Matabel the other day, I said, I'm, I want to go to the Risano Gashi line and see what is it that you're doing in terms of uh, uh, technology. Um, this, um, and also the dream for me will be to have a customer um, sitting in the comfort of their living room uh, saying, all oh, right, I need to move, um, uh, say, for instance, Conco. Conco is one of our main customers in Eswatini, and they want, obviously, to make sure that Coca-Cola is drank, um, uh, is drunk, um, I mean, is, is, is distributed right through the African continent. But I want a situation where Conco can log into a portal, into a Eswatini railway portal with TFR, with all the railways having an input into this one tariff, where he just plugs in and says, I want to move a consignment, let's say three containers. Uh, this is a dimension, there's a 12 meter or a, a six meter container, uh, 30 of them from point A to point B, and they should just get that quotation and get an invoice, etc. So I think that is for me, um, in a, I know it's a long-winded way, but I think technology, you can see, is sort of key. And upskilling of uh, our people. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and I think you've painted quite an incredible picture of what can be, what, what we can aspire to achieve. And, and even if I look at what, what has been done by CFM and, and Transnet, I believe just from running those through trains, you've even managed to increase the number of slots that are available and the number of trains that you can run from about 15 to 21 just from being able to, to run a seamless, seamless operation. So technology, capacity, those are key issues. Raymond, 
from your side, from BBR, what, what is that key issue? And what is the ask? Thank you so much. I think just to give a slight, uh, short background of uh, BBR, uh, Whitebridge Blower Rail Railway uh, is, is, is a subsidiary of uh, uh, Green Road Freight Rail, rail, rail Services, Freight Services. Now, it's a concession that uh, the first of its kind in Africa in 1999, uh, it got a 30-year concession. And I've just stepped into the position where there's the last seven years of the concession. So one thing that uh, uh, makes me not sleep is the discussion on triple Ps. We know rail is, these are national assets that uh, governments hold so dear. But we have had examples of successful private players coming into this industry, and us being an example, I think we heard about uh, Angola, uh, the Lobito Corridor. Can these discussions be made uh, at a larger scale? So yes, these are key, but how much more can the private sector come into play? Governments assist with so many things that they, they, they have to meet. COVID was an unplanned destruction that uh, took away resources, maybe that would have come to rail. What can we do to involve the private sector more? If we don't look at that and maybe discriminate against certain cap capital, that might uh, make us better in terms of operations. The gap with uh, road is going to continue to grow. I'll, I'll tell you why. We are lagging behind in terms of rail infrastructure uh, compared to the development in the mining sector. So what has happened is in Zimbabwe, for example, there is, we have Wangi Colliery, which is the biggest coal producer in Zimbabwe, that the shaft is more than 30 kilometers away from the rail. So what is happening now is the road hauliers are having to, 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 to bring the, the, the coal sometimes closer to, to, to rail. But some of the customers are not keen to do that. What they will do is immediately once it goes to on road, it goes straight to, 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 to destination. So we need to capitalize on, on, on this opportunity. There is certain capital that is lying idle out there that we can bring in so that we catch up uh, uh, with road. It's key also for other rail operators because the opportunity in rail at the moment is in those gaps created by, 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 by the development of the mining sector uh, compared to, to rail. It's in identifying those gaps there because that's where the opportunity is and making sure that we know those gaps. Because some of our infrastructure at the moment is servicing mines that are close to, 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 to the end of their useful life. So if the discussion is not done now, you'll find that gap between rail and, and road is going to continue. So I'm advocating as a private capital to come in the, more private capital to come in the space. It will be a disservice for my nation, Zimbabwe, to, for, for Green Road Limited uh, capital to go elsewhere when there is an opportunity in Zimbabwe for that capital to remain in Zimbabwe. So one thing I have to say to myself is, before the seven years is over, I must make sure that there is an opportunity that is available for my shareholder to also continue to play a part in Zimbabwe. Thank you. No, thank you for that. And, and I think the topic of capital is going to be critical, particularly in the next panel discussion as well. Uh, so the, the team that will be coming up to take over in terms of financing, these are some of the key things that are being put on the table. Uh, CFL, um, what is that issue that, that you are struggling with? And, and what is your ask to your, your corresponding CEOs? Um, CFL, Olhando para problemas, possíveis problemas que, que o seu departamento possa estar a enfrentar, qual é o problema que poderia dizer que se tivesse este problema ultrapassado, podia ter melhor resultados de operação? Bom, eu penso que os problemas a nível da região existem, mas o caminho de ferro de Benguela já está ligado com a RDC. Well, um, in terms of challenges, we do have challenges as a whole. However, um, 
Bengala already is uh, already connected uh, in solution in, uh, in obtaining solutions with RDC. Já está numa média de 350 mil toneladas ano. We are already on to 350 tons per year. O que pode faltar aqui é a união dos países membros dessa região. What probably might be lacking here is perhaps could be the unity uh, of the, the of the countries in the region. Vai ser assinado o acordo tripartido para facilitação da transição de mercadorias. We are soon, as I indicated earlier, we are soon in November we are signing a, a tripart agreement in order to to have a, a better, you know, a better operation um, uh, in a region. Esse é um sinal muito claro para aquilo que nós podemos chamar de uma integração nesta região. Our wish to have this tripartite agreement, it's already a sign that uh, how we really eager to, 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 to improve our, our service delivery. Com a concessão do corredor, naturalmente poderá facilitar ainda mais outros operadores a nível desse corredor e a nível da região. Once we have this achieved, we want to believe that uh, we'll be able to attract even more and better um, um, uh, uh, investors that they'll be willing to, to come and, uh, and, and help for better solutions. Naturalmente, outros investimentos poderão ser necessários, mas ao seu tempo. Well, um, obviously, obviously we, we might have more, we might need more investments uh, to be done, our, but, um, well, we'll take it from there when they come, in, in due time. E assim, para começar, o caminho está aberto. Muito obrigado. And uh, in this way, as I've indicated, the way is open. Thank you very much. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for that. And Tozama, you have the, the final word. Um, <laughs> you've had the benefit of hearing from your fellow panelists. You could respond to some of the, the aspirations that they've put on the table as well. Communication issues, technology, wagons. Um, what, what is it for, for TFR? Okay, um, just to maybe respond to Mr. Matavel and the, and the IT integration. Um, as Mr. Mr. Matavel has said, we're already in the testing phase of that project because it's a joint aspiration that we have transparency through, the, through, through all the channels. And I think the nice thing is the results that we'll get from this um, testing phase will be able to then maybe roll out to other corridors as well. So we, we, we're quite advanced. Um, in that space, and it's a it's a it's a vision that we all share, uh, total transparency um, throughout the, the, the corridor, uh, for us is something we aspire to. So being in the testing phase, we're quite we're quite confident um, that uh, we'll be able to implement an integrated IT system soon. Um, in terms of what keeps us awake. Um, <clears throat> The last thing is we're already getting over it slowly but surely. Um, the legacy issue of lack of investment in our infrastructure, right? Um, so on the TFR side, we really are making inroads slowly but surely in the renewal of our infrastructure because it talks to what I raised earlier in terms of being reliable, right? So, so for us, I mean, you want, I can give you a list. But at the top of the list really is our desire to be reliable and, and be predictable so that our customers can regain confidence in using us and we get uh, traffic from road to rail. Um, our ask from, from our regional partners is really that we see a, color, a collaborating um, initiatives across the railways in investing in infrastructure as well. We've seen uh, um, with CFM, uh, we had an opportunity to, to observe that. Other railways, it's important we do the same. Because for me, I think it's important that we run longer trains through the system. Rather than add trains, because the demand is quite huge out there for export volume. And I believe the answer is not necessarily to add number of trains to the system, but rather to run the trains longer. Um, we're already experimenting with 160 wagon train for Magnetite. We'd love to see that go all the way to Maputo. 
and would love to see that go all the way to Richards Bay through Swaziland as well. So our ask really is let's see a corresponding investment in infrastructure across the railways so that we are able to roll out longer trains right across the system. Thanks. No, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, colleagues, this brings us to, to the close of our discussion and we'll open for, for the audience. But you've heard the aspirations of the CEOs here. It's everything from the infrastructure uh, that, that needs to be, to be upgraded. Uh, I know there are a lot of sections uh, on the North-South Corridor, as an example, that operate under significant TSRs, 30 kilometers an hour, 20 kilometers an hour, even down to 5 kilometers an hour. We've heard the, the comments around capacity, ensuring you've got enough wagon so that the customer actually gets the service that they're looking for. Um, we've heard the comments around the, the technology. Um, this issue of actually knowing when the train is left, when it's arrived, when it's coming back. Um, and to, like we've heard from ESR, being able to give that visibility back to the customer. So the customer has that, that same information. Um, so these are the aspirations that you've, you've heard from, from the CEOs. And I think the, the panel that will be coming on uh, will probably be able to deal with how to deliver on that from a funding perspective and how to get the financing that can actually start unlocking infrastructure, wagon capacity, technology solutions. But as you've heard, work is already on, on the go, work is being done, um, and, and the railways are not standing stationary. So with that, colleagues, we, we will bring, we'll bring this, this conversation to a close. I've just been told we, we've run out of time. Um, but we, we will take at least two questions from the floor, if we can. Uh, so that we do give our audience the opportunity. I can see the gentleman in the, in the gray jacket there. If you can take the first question and then uh, the gentleman in the brown jacket as well. And if you can indicate your name, uh, organization, and who you're posing the question to. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, my name is Jack Bello. I'm from Eswatini. Mine is a contribution. Uh, our region is endowed with minerals that everyone wants to grab. We, in this region, are endowed with very modern functioning courts owned by our governments. Baira, oh, started uh, in Tanzania, Pemba, Maputo, Richards Bay, Durban, and another one coming. Those courts function, and they are owned by our governments. Now, what do we need? We need strategic planners, strategic thinkers, strategic doers, not talk shop business. Fortunately, we have them. I don't know the other uh, CEOs that well. I know Matabe, Engineer Matabe. We were crying about, uh, you know, coming up. We we're thinking. In, in a Swatin. He's an old man. Maybe we need more old men. <laughs> Connected with a young man. And uh, Matabel made it happen overnight that our minister and the minister in Mozambique, they came together, went to Mozambique. The following day, they signed the agreement. It didn't take centuries. It didn't take talk shows. Through that man, he is one of the few. I think there are many of them there. Uh, with that, I would like to say, let us support all those uh, people. They are there, they're not far away. We have business to do. Let's not have a talk show. Let us give a clap to all of them, especially Matabel. Oh, he gave us wagons. Sorry, the last, the last thing I, I, I almost forgot. They were talking together with Mr. Zamini. We don't have wagons. We have coal from South Africa to ferry to Maputo. No wagons. I, I don't want to divide the number. Brand new wagons. Matabel overnight brought them. Overnight. <laughs> now, he borrowed us his wagon. He is not a, a top. Every day he forms that young man. Hey, I don't see the wagons flying here. Thank you very much. Excellent. No, thank you. Thank you for that intervention. Um, sir, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Stevenson Gubane from Eswatini uh, Railways. Uh, thank you for this uh, very healthy discussion I'm hearing from the CEOs. And um, I must say that 
whilst they are sharing with us the challenges, the things that don't make them sleep at night. Unfortunately, there will be more things that don't make them sleep at night because they have the solutions as well. They are the leaders of these organizations that actually are going to translate the regional integration to, 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 to actions and to operationalize the regional integration. And one of the things that they have to look at, which I know they are sensitive about, we talk about capacity in terms of attractive power and, and, and wagons. And railways for many, many years, and I hope since they are sitting here realizing, recognizing the problem, they must start looking at how can privately own the rolling stock you know, run through these railways because we need the private sector participation. And of course, what will attract the private sector participation? It is going to be the business cases they are talking about, developing the business cases. They know that the customers have got high, they have increasing demand to use rail. We also see it on the roads which are congested, which have got the risk of accidents. I therefore say that uh, uh, I'm, I'm really relieved to say they are here, they are talking about it, they are going to find the solutions by working together and so that we are able to talk about integration and looking at the components of it, cross-border working of locomotives and weapons. I know the locomotives are sensitive, but they've got to come up with a plan. Cross-border working of crews, which is the seamless service, which also uh, then uh, uh, attracts the participation of our government, like immigration and so forth. That is my contribution and comment. And once again, it's been a very good discussion. Thank you. Excellent. No, thank you for that uh, intervention. Uh, colleagues, we'll take the final comment. If you could be brief, sir, I'm told we have, we have run out of time. Please go ahead. Uh, th thank you. I'll, I'll be very brief. It is about BBI. As I learned, um, the concession 30 years and on left around seven years. So my question is that if you look back for last 27 years, 23 years of concession, did you make investment on infrastructures which are you running? Why this question? Because we have some experience that the government make a concession, a certain railway line, then the concession does not going well, they cancel it and give back to the railway mother company, the rotten system. So my question is that, are you satisfied with the maintenance investment you done during this last 23 years? Thank you. Raymond, what is the scorecard on how BBR is done? Right, thank you. I think the unique thing about uh, BBR is we did not just take over an existing line. There was a gap between Bight Bridge and West Nicholson, which was about 170 kilometers, that we built from scratch, which reduced the, the, the distance of the north-south corridor by 200 kilometers. So it's not taking over and, and running an existing line. So we have done that. And I think to, to, to me, I think one of the notions uh, which we, we, we need to, 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 to educate people o, o, on such project is that we are going to hand over to the government a line that is valued more, at more than $150 million. So you look at that line uh, uh, over 30 years, it means that to an extent the government has received a return of about $5 million United States dollars per, per year. Not only that, but that life still has useful uh, useful life of uh, definitely more than 30 years. So there is a benefit that is accrued to the government. The additional benefit that is accrued to the government is in the paying of taxes. We have paid uh, the, the, your, your, your usual income taxes and all sorts of things. Over and above that, we have, we, we have those are other benefits. We have trained people over the 20, 23 years. I started as a junior employee. Uh, and uh, the first time it was, it was a foreign national that was uh, running the, the organization. But one of the key uh, targets was that by the end of the concession, there should be a local national running the organization. And I'm privileged 
to be a beneficiary of that. So there has been significant contribution. 800 people over the 23 years have gone through the company and some are in helping in the regions through the training that we received uh, from the group. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, intervention, uh, Raymond. And with that, colleagues, unfortunately, we have to bring our discussion to a close. Tozama, thank you. Julio, Raymond, Nixon, Bruno, and Mr. Matavel. Colleagues, please, please give a round of applause to my panel.